The first image we see is a large city full of bright lights at night and then we are taken inside Bai's house while she is sitting in front of her computer. She is trying to think of something to type on her computer and we soon realize that she is trying to start writing her third book of her series. She brings into her mind lots of comments from her readers who likes her books a lot and can't wait to read the new one but that only seems to add some pressure on her. Since she is not in place to come up with something good, she visits a website under the address footmalls.com and narrates that she only trusts the future. We are taken to seven days later and Bai's sister is banging on her door, but her Bai is not answering. Her sister uses her password to get in and finds Bai tied up and dead. She calls the police and one of the agents, Zen, asks the forensics guy what information he has gathered till now. He gives Zen his estimation on the time of death and adds that her death was not caused by strangling, even though it looks that way. Zen and her partner Guo walk into Bai's room and Zen looks around while his partner talks to the victim's husband, Liu, who says he was drunk last night and didn't understand what happened or how the murder happened. Zen finds a final draft of Bai's last book on her computer and looks up for it on the internet, discovering that her last book, titled Farewell Forever, is not yet published. He also looks through her browsing history and finds out about the footmalls.com website, but when he clicks on it, he gets a 404 error. In the police station, Zin and Guo are trying to figure out some details about the murder scene, mentioning that the crime scene was spotlessly clean. Additionally, Zin says that the position she was found in was imitated by her last novel. He speaks with Bei's sister and tells him about an incident that happened some time ago, when Bei was awarded for her work and a crazy fan was dissatisfied of her because she was delaying the publication of her last book. The fan blamed it on Liu and told him he is holding Bei back since Liu himself is an average writer. Zin talks with Liu and asks him why he was drunk yesterday and the latter replies because his book's draft was rejected by the publishers. After some back and forth interrogation, Zin reveals that the last person Bei Yi spoke with was her ex-boyfriend Chuang. Chuang is very cooperative with the police and adds to the mix his suspicion about Bei Yi receiving a beating from Liu in the past. Two more clues follow since the police finds out that Bei Yi's crazy fan from the past named Chen has gone missing and that Bei Yi has been visiting a psychiatrist, Dr. Yang, who also happens to be Zin's love interest. Zin sends Yang home and then breaks into Bei's house to look for clues, discovering a pile of letters and a copy of her unpublished book in her office. A male figure is lurking around while the lights go out and Zin runs after him, cornering him onto a parking lot and arresting him when the man who seems to be Chen jumps one floor down and sprains his ankle. A new member is added to the team, Zin's brother Li, to help with the case. Zin gives him Bei's hard drive and Lee finds out Bay sent her first draft of her last book to a publisher three days ago, so there was not enough time to make a copy of it. The forensic report is completed and the team learns that Bay's cause of death was intracranial bleeding and spine fractures. There is also a fact that they didn't expect, which is Bay being pregnant. Zin has a talk with Chin and he tells Zin that he broke into Bay's house to find out about her latest work, but he wasn't the one who turned the lights off. In the meantime, Bei's sister, Yang Zin, watches an old video of theirs and notices that she had spilled some coffee over one of her sister's white dresses, which makes her realize that her sister's clothes have been changed after the murder. Lee checks out if Chuang's alibi is real, but it isn't. He was in another location from the one he claimed to be on the night of the murder. The episode also cycles back and shows us some moments from Bei and Lu's life. We see that she enters the Foot Mall's website and orders her book, which is supposed to be published two years later in time. Leo sees the book and realizes that its content is exactly the same as the new book he is writing. He confronts Bei about it and some alcohol is spilled on the book, but it quickly evaporates as if the book was burning hot. Yang Zin goes to the police and tells them about her sister's clothes, which motivates them to go back at Bei's house and carefully examine it. They use special lighting tools and discover blood stains on the wall, which makes Zin and the rest go after Liu. We are shown yet another flashback, and we see Bai Yi speaking with her doctor, Yang, telling her that she can't sleep even though she takes her pills. 
Yang asks her what she thinks about when she can't sleep and Bei Yi says she wants to know how she can earn forgiveness for something she did. When Yang asks her what she did, Bei Yi replies that she stole someone's future. Back in present time, Yang Xin starts a live stream and says Liu is the one who killed her sister, which in turn makes Liu call her and tell her she didn't know her sister, blaming her for plagiarizing all of his work and stealing his life. We are taken back in time and into Bei Yi's session with Yang, where she reveals that when all of her drafts were rejected, a website formulated in her computer screen and she ordered two books. Those books were written by Liu, but when she looked him up on the web, he was nowhere to be found. Bei Yi quickly figured that these books were not yet written in the present and she copied them and sent them to a publisher, thus making a living out of them but limiting Liu's true potential. Back in present day, Yang Xin starts a new live stream because Liu asks her to do so while sitting on the edge of a terrace, warning that he is going to expose the truth about Bei Yi. The police gets on the spot and Liu starts telling what happened that night of the murder. He and Bei Yi had been fighting for a long time because of her attitude and the theft of his books, but that night, Chuang drove Bei Yi home and Liu saw them hugging. Liu threatened Bei Yi that he would expose the truth and blamed Bei Yi for being manipulative toward him. Bei Yi told him she is pregnant, but Liu interrupted that as another manipulative strategy of Bei Yi's and started acting insane, pushing her over the second floor. At first, he wanted to die with her, but then Bei Yi's phone received a message from Chuang, which made him angry and desiring to live and punish Bei Yi, which resulted in him tying her up. Liu gets up and stands on the edge of the terrace. Zen quickly asks him about the mysterious website Bei Yi bought the books from, but Liu tells him the website is not easy to find. He grabs his phone and types foot malls, but the address displays an error. When Liu reaches an emotional climax, the foot malls website starts working and shows him a book from the future titled The Life of a Prisoner, written by himself. Liu smiles and says he eventually made it and he is not going to die. However, he trips and falls backwards. Zen jumps over and grabs his hand, and even though they are both hanging, Liu is happy because he knows his book is going to be published. Liu is enthusiastic and moves a lot, which makes it more difficult for Zen to hold him. Thankfully, Guo has instructed the policeman to set up a mattress, and Liu falls on it while some other men pull Zen up. Right next, we are introduced to the backstory of a friendly lady that works in the police department and is obsessed with sandwiches. We see that she and her husband had a son and they were really connected as a family until one day her son got hit by a car and passed away. Mizen refuses to let go of her son and she sees him everywhere she looks. Her son is the reason she is obsessed with sandwiches and only eats sandwiches herself because she used to make them for him. Mizen's husband Guan is trying to deal with his depression in a healthy way and he has regular therapy sessions with Yang. Meanwhile, Mizen works in front of her computer and she flickers her eyes, which become dry from the long screen time exposure. She takes out some eye drops she has bought from footmalls.com and uses them to moisturize her eyes. Of course, these are not ordinary eye drops since she starts seeing her son Ji playing around in her office. Zen and the rest of the team visit a restaurant to grab a meal together and it becomes apparent that Li like Yang in the past. Mi Zen does some crazy things like pretending to be her son Ji and sending text messages to his friends saying that his mother made him an awesome sandwich or going to her son's school the next day and imagining her son running and playing with the other kids. When she sits down and uses her eye drops again, she sees her son playing with the other kids and calling her to chase him, which she happily does and results in freaking the rest of the children out. At the same time, Yang Zin is missing her sister and sends some text messages to her phone and is very surprised when she realizes that those messages are read. In the next scene, we see that Lee is the one who has been reading her messages since he is analyzing Bei's computer in order to find any possible clues on footmalls.com. Zen sees Yang Zen's messages, asking if her sister is back from the dead, and tells Li to return the computer to Yang Zen immediately after he is done. Yang Zen starts a live stream and tells her viewers she is going to talk about parallel universes, 
but Lee rings her bell and returns to her computer, telling her that he is the one viewing her messages. Yang Xin wants to help with the case and is able to find a website referring to footmalls.com. Since she gets the opportunity, she orders a webcam, but when she meets with Lee, he tells her that his webcam is probably stolen since there is nothing special about it, and he assumes that Yang Xin got scammed. Meanwhile, Mi Xin continues using the eye drops and watches her son going over various stages of life. She first sees him as a teenager and then as a young adult. Her husband Guan is trying to stay calm, but that becomes increasingly difficult for him. The police sets the guy who scammed Yang Xin up and they arrest him. Mei Xin sees him and she thinks he is her son since he looks exactly like the grown-up version of Ji. The next morning, Mi Xin searches her bag for the eye drops but they have been stolen by Guan, who uses them and is able to see his son as a little kid. However, he is mature enough to realize that he is seeing an illusion. A short flashback shows us what has happened with little Ji, who was left on the road by his father just to be taught a lesson for misbehaving. Guan quickly regretted his act and turned his car around, but those short moments were more than enough for the worst thing to happen and Ji got hit by a car. Guan visits Mi Zen in the police department and tells her he was able to see their son, who told him that they can now greet each other properly. He adds that they don't need the eye drops because their son is never going to disappear since he lives in their hearts. Those words seem to be enough for Mi Zen, who sees the grown-up version of her son for one last time without using the eye drops and greets him goodbye. Thanks for staying with us. Make sure to check part number two out as soon as it's up.